Hi, this is Petey at Birdzerg Arcade at birdzergarcade.com, and today we're going to start working on our client for our card game. Now, before you start, head on over to smartfoxserver.com, and while you're here, you'll want to go to the products, API Central, and get the .NET Mono Unity 3D framework. So you can download that right here. And while you're downloading that, you should also take a look at the Multiplayer Island demo. Now this is quite a large download, so if you're in a country where you have to pay per bit downloaded, you might want to forego that, but it really is a good example of how to synchronize animation over a network, and there's, there's a lot of good stuff in there. You should really take a look at it. Once that's downloaded, you'll want to create an empty project in Unity, and as you can see, I haven't included the standard package or the pro package. So you're going to want to create a folder here. And you're going to want to call it Plugins. This is where we're, we're going to save the SmartFox server network client. And it has to be in a folder called Plugins, and it has to be in the root directory here. You can't put it under another directory or it won't work. So let's open up the folder that we downloaded. As you can see, there's quite a few examples. I'd recommend reading through all those examples and the documentation. I was just going to the examples. It doesn't really matter which one we go into. Go to Assets. There we go. We'll go to the Plugins folder. And just take the SmartFox client.ddl, drag it, and put it into yours. Unity will import it automatically for you. And there you go. Now let's create another folder. We're going to call it Scripts. Now let's create our first script. I'm going to be using C Sharp for this example, and we'll call our script Lobby. So let's edit the script. And now that we have this one created, let's create another script for our SmartFox server client. So we'll go to Scripts, Create, C Sharp Script. We'll call it SmartFox. We'll edit it. I'll just cut and paste it in. So there we go. This creates a singleton instance of our SmartFox server client. And we'll be using this through all the other scripts to maintain a constant connection to our server. So let's head back to our lobby script. And let's edit the using statements. There's going to be quite a few more that we're going to be using throughout the course of this tutorial, or at least this project. Maybe not necessarily in this tutorial, but let's add a bunch of them now. So there we go. I've cut and pasted the using statements that we're going to be needing. And we're also going to have to edit the script to add an awake function and some variables. Okay, let's comment these so we know what they are. Now this is the string for the server name. Since I'm going to be using the local server, I've just included the local server IP address. But this should be the IP address of the server or the name of the server such as www.bergsergarcade.com or the server port. By default SmartFox server runs on the port 9339. Now you can edit this but since I have it and I'm just using the default install of SmartFox server I'm just going to be using that port. So the port that we have smart fox server running on. Okay, this is our instance of the smart fox server or the smart fox server client. We'll be using this throughout all of our scripts to maintain a constant connection. So we want to make sure that we have that in every script that needs to access the server. Uh, the instance of the client. Yeah, uh, client connection. Now, error message. We want to be able to track the error messages as they occur, so we're going to create a variable just to store those in. And we want to include the name of the zone that we're going to be connecting to. So, this is the zone that we will be connecting to. Now, we'll want to have a a place to store the username and password. So this will be the username. Uh, 
the user password. Next we'll want to include our awake method and what this will do is set up our smart box server client to be able to communicate back and forth with the server. And here's the code. Now what this is doing is saying that, saying that if smart box server is initialized, great, we'll use that. If not, we're going to connect to the server. We'll create that function in just a bit. Next we'll want to register all the events that we're going to receive back from the server. So we'll have another function for that. Next we're going to try to connect to the server. If we can't, catch the error, store the error messages, and then in our onGUI function, we'll print that error message to the screen. Here we'll just randomize the username and just use that for default for now. The next thing we're going to do is make a list of callbacks that we're going to want to listen to from the server. So let's get rid of these two functions as we're not going to use them anytime soon. And we'll just cut and paste this in. Now in the first function here, what we're doing is registering all the events we're going to listen to from the SmartFox server. So we have the on connection, on connection lost, on login, on logout, on room list update, on join room, on debug message, and on extension response. And you notice that there's a little plus equal sign here. What this is doing is adding this method or function, which we'll create later on, to this event. So when this event fires off from the server and gets sent to us, this function will handle all of the logic that we're going to do for that. And likewise for the rest of the functions. Now down here, this is uh, where we unregister those, those uh, functions to the events. And you want to make sure you call this every time that you leave a scene so that any event that you have registered, you also unregister. 